Now we we'll go into the word and we'll still come back and speak some words of healing more. But let's go into the word. The setting or I mean setting the aura for networking in the year of exploits. Let me add that to it. In the year of exploits. All right, we give God the praise. So, God wants us to have the right aura, and we've been studying this since the beginning of the week. He wants us to have the right aura around us, the right aura. And that's the right energy, so that when people meet with you, they can meet the energy of faithfulness, of commitment, of love, of truthfulness and honesty, when they meet with you. All right? It is important that we have that. That we have that. It's important. Very crucial. Because people are God's hands. Like the Bible reveals in Psalm 16. They are God's hands. God Almighty uses them to execute his plans. You are also part of God's hand. When God wants to use you in somebody's life, he uses you. He will tell you, do this, and then you do it. And the person will be saying, oh, God has used that person for me. Yes, because you are part of God's hand. I am part of God's hand. You are part of God's hand. All of us are God's hands. Even the people that don't believe in God, they are part of God's hand. God can use them to bless you, open doors for you, do stuff for you. All right? But for you to have a good network with these people, you need to have the aura that attracts them, that draws them. And it is very, very important for us to get into that. Very, very, very important. Now, we have said that the first thing you need to seek when it comes to this, having this right atmosphere and aura is you need to seek the presence of God. Because when you allow the presence of God to soak your physical environment, it begins to cancel all the negatives that are in your energy field. You know, some people, their energy field has filth there. So when people come around there, they feel feel, they sense feels. They felt they, 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 they're looking so tidy and, and clean. But they just sense that this person is dirty. All right. Some people it's, it's rejection that is there. You know, so they see you, you look attractive physically, but they just repel you. And they just say, I don't like that guy. Say, oh, but there's something wrong with him. I just, I just don't like him. Oh, I don't like that girl. No, no, no. I mean, I just don't like her. And that's it. And people, are, sometimes you even wonder, because before we used to think, okay, that was a woman thing. The woman would say, oh, I don't, I just don't feel good about it and all that. But now everybody knows how to do that now and sends people out. So you must have the right atmosphere and the presence of God does that for you. It will counsel all the negatives and plant around you the positive, the energy of love, of acceptance, the sweet energy of favor, of flow, of strength, of grace. You just begin to have all of it flowing in, coming in, flowing in, coming in. All right? And that's what's happening. That's what is taking place. The hand of God is in your life. The presence of God soaks you. And we talked about how to get this presence to continue. When you spend time in communion with God, during your worship, during your uh, reading of scriptures, there is the opportunity to soak in the presence of God. All right? So you allow yourself to be filled and overfilled and overfilled, and it's rubbed on you until it becomes your personal atmosphere. Everywhere you go, people can sense it. They just sense God around. They sense truthfulness. They sense righteousness. They sense love. They sense joy. Unspeakable. So God wants us to have his presence. Now, we also mentioned that you need to make sure that your personality, because your personality is going to radiate in your field, in your energy field, in the aura around your life. Now, the one we want to really look at today, which you know, can really create a lot of damage, is that in the spirit, you have to care, be careful 
about using the blood of Jesus. You have to make sure you constantly use the blood for cleansing, for purifying, and all of that. Why? Because the enemy can quickly take advantage of that. The Lord has died on the cross. He has paid full price for us. He has done everything to have us free. And so we can enjoy all the freedom. We just need to make up our minds to consistently apply the blood. In the book of James, in chapter 4, one of the test scriptures for today, it reads, sorry, excuse me, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Now, I'll tell you this. The things you do, they affect your horror. First, when you yield to the Holy Spirit and you walk with him and you are in koinonia with him, in koinonia with the Father, his presence continues to increase and the intensity and concentration also continue to increase around your life. So people always cannot resist you. They cannot reject you. Even dark forces and powers, they fear you. They run from you. They don't operate where you are. Their powers are seized when you show up. Why? Because you have the atmosphere of God around you. Now, when a person disobeys the Holy Ghost or sins, the Holy Spirit does not depart, but the intensity of his presence begins to reduce, it begins to wane. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is withdrawing them all back into the person. So it's important to keep a clean life, a holy life, a righteous life. Very, very important. So James chapter 4 verse 8. Draw near to God and it will draw near unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Why? Because that hand that is stained is a minus. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So what he's saying is this. When a person sings, his hands are stained. That stained hand shows up in the atmosphere around the person. It affects the spiritual atmosphere around the person. Because a stain comes in. If you look at, um, because you say, ah, can the physical sin affect somebody's spiritual climate? Okay, let's look at 2 Corinthians in chapter 7, verse 1. Look at what he said. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all the filthiness of the flesh and spirit affecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. And when there's filthiness in the spirit, it's in the atmosphere around that person in the spirit. To cleanse it, we have to apply the blood. And that's why it is important for us to make sure we receive cleansing all the time when we make mistakes. Now, the agenda of God is that we sin not. But if you sin, you have an advocate to the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous, is the propitiation for our sin. First John 2, verse 2. Verse 1 and 2, yes. First John chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. So God wants you to receive his best. And to have that best of God, sorry. To have that best of God, you have to make sure you apply constant cleansing. So that your spiritual atmosphere is constantly saturated because sin can stop it. Doubt also can lower the presence. All right? Doubt, sin. So what do I do? If, keep the walk of faith in holiness. Do not sin. But if you sin, run to the Father immediately. All right? Look at what John said in First John. We need to understand this. And that's why John... John was very, very determined to just do the will of God. In John, 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, he said, My little children, these things write down to you, that ye may sin not. So the goal is that don't sin. And if any man sin, that means if it even happens at all, even though we don't want you to sin, but if it happens at all, we have an advocate with the Father, 
Jesus Christ the righteous. Verse 2. He is the propitiation for our sins. So he is the payment for our sins. He's the exchange for our sins. All you need to do is just, Father, please forgive me. I plead the blood of Jesus. And that's it. You'll be cleansed. The blood will purge the spiritual atmosphere of that sin that has stained your hand, that wants to affect your atmosphere. It will cleanse your hands. All right? First John in chapter 1, verse... Um, First John chapter... Um, what is it now? Yeah, chapter 1. All right, I'll read from verse 6. He said, if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light and we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. For if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just if you confess it. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and also to do what? To cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So every time you come, there's a cleansing by the blood. When you run to him, not necessarily when you run to anybody, but when you run to him, there's cleansing. He cleanses and purifies, and the atmosphere becomes pure and clean again. And then you can walk in the beauty of the Lord. Let us pray. Pray with me and say, Father, please forgive me. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And let my aura be soaked with your presence. And saturated, drenched with your presence. In the name of Jesus. Pray on that in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Oh, we give you praise. Thank you.